A very good day from myself, Devon Govender, and welcome to Speed Down Under. This is KZN's premier harness racing selection show that is proudly brought to you by Gallup TV. And on this week's edition, as usual, we're covering the race meeting that takes place in Western Australia at headquarters at Gloucester Park. Aldo Kodapasi is going to be joining me on the line shortly. He's got a suggested best bet as well as a jackpot. It looks like quite a competitive card this week and we're hoping we can point the punters in the right direction and hopefully you can make some money come this Friday. Good day Aldo, how are you doing? I got very well Devon, thank you. That's good, that's good. We missed you on the show last week, uh, obviously due to some technical difficulties, but uh, you're back this week and uh, we're hoping that uh, we can find some winners. This card looks very competitive. Very difficult week this week, uh, hence the amount of uh, selections per race. Some very competitive racing this week and uh, yeah, the tips are very, were very hard to come across a Wanted to select more runners in each race, but um, we need to look for some value for the punters as well. So that's why we've gone the way we've gone. Okay, let's get straight into the action. Of course, there is Group 3 racing at uh, Gloucester Park this week. And uh, you heard Elder saying that this is quite a competitive uh, race meeting. So if you guys want to load up in the jackpot, you can certainly do so. But we're going to give you our suggested bets as well as the best bet and suggested jackpot that slide's going to come up on screen uh, any moment now and we're going to start with the best bet because this kicks off before the jackpot it'll close at 12 33 south african time and it comes up in race four although you've gone with number one steno from the ace draw yeah everyone knows my feelings about Artie by the seaside i think she's a very smart mayor i think she's the best mayor in the state but I just don't think she can give Steno a head start. Steno drawing one, Artie by the seaside night. Um, she's going to have to do a lot of work. She's going to have to burn hard early to get up outside Steno. And I think Steno's just going to be able to hold an easy lead early and then run um, as soon as uh, Artie by the seaside gets to her outside. And, uh, with the favourable barrier draw and the amount of runners in between them, I just think Steno's going to be... Uh, She's going to be a lot better value than she's paying at the moment um, come Friday. So uh, I think she's uh, looks like a good thing come tomorrow night. Well, Aldo, Aldo is very confident about number one, Steno, that comes up in race four. That is the best bet. And you heard his analysis on the race. Of course, number nine, Ardi by the seaside, will be the main danger. But this one has a very tough draw to negotiate. Will come from barrier gate nine. And Steno from draw one could get all the favours. And this is a banker in all bets. Let's move on to the jackpot, which kicks off in race number five. That will close at 13.02 South African time. We've got four numbers here, Aldo. Numbers one, 10, 2, and 7. We'll start with number one. That is Menemsha. Yeah, it looks like a very nice up-and-coming horse. Got the gate speed. I feel he'll probably hold up early. And uh, so that'll bring the 10 horse into the race. And then you've got Golden Wild, who's going to be sitting close to the speed. I've left a favourite out of this race, Christopher Dance. Um, he won very impressively first up, but this is a big step up in class. And I'm just not sure how he's going to go coming off the track across the park on his second run here. So I've left a favourite out of my selections in this meeting, of this race. Uh, I just think uh, I've got off the on-speed runners, and I think they'll uh, be given... Given the favourite a fair bit to chase, but I think uh, the favourite's worth the risk this one. Give him a miss this, this one. Well, there you heard it from Aldo. He's left the favourite out and hopefully he could have found the value for us here in the first leg of the jackpot. Aldo, I see you've thrown in number two. That is Golden Load. I've had a good look at the reruns and I really fancy the chances of this individual. And if this arrives, this could make the jackpot pay because this is one of, quite a big outsider in the field. I was really surprised that he's paying is what he's paying. I thought he's done nothing wrong. His form was very strong. And even to the point where he's got the stable's four-string driver on him. Um, I was very surprised that uh, he's been left out of selections and left out of the betting. Uh, I, I really like the horse. I think he's an up-and-coming horse. 
he's got the draw to sit on the speed. And I think he could be a boil over in this race, um, especially if they burn hard. And uh, like I said, I was very surprised that he was so far out in the betting, but uh, that might come into uh, our benefit later in the night. Well, Aldo has given us even more confidence there about number two, Golden Load, and that could be a nice each-way bet there. And this is one of the big outsiders of the field, and we're hoping that this could arrive in the first leg of the jackpot, and we're going to be building up some big momentum in terms of the payout overall. Moving on to the next leg of the jackpot, we've gone light here. We've included numbers four and one, that is Lavra Joe and Tricky Mickey. Yeah... It's not the strongest of uh, free-for-alls. I think Labrador will burn the gate early. He'll get in front of that, his horses, and Lab Tricky Mickey will be sitting on his back. But um, just going to have to class two runners of the race, really, to be, to be honest. And uh, I think Labrador is, is, is a cup horse. He's getting ready to go back to the cups in a few weeks' time. So if he's going to be a contender for the pace and cup he needs to be winning this race tomorrow night and I think he's he's not quite screwed down yet but he's not far away and I think his ability is just better than the rest of these uh, Tricky Mickey will be sitting on his back so if there is a little bit of a chink in his armour for that his second run back Tricky Mickey might be able to sprint over him so that's the only reason I'm sort of going to run Tricky Mickey into this mix um, thinking maybe Labrador may be a run short and if he is he's the danger well, the firm first selection is number four, Lavra Joe, but uh, if, he, if he is short of a little bit of that match fitness, Aldo has backed it up with number one, Tricky Mickey. So we've got, made it short and sweet there in race number six, numbers four and one. Moving on to race number seven, which is the second last leg of the jackpot, just the three numbers here, numbers four, two and ten. We'll start with number four, Lion Queen for the inform yard of Mike Reed. Yeah, I really like this filly. She's uh, she's very brave. She's very strong. Um, her run, her runs have all been very strong since she's had a long spell, and uh, I think she'll she'll be coming off the gate early, and she'll put herself into this race nice and early. And uh, I think she's a she's a very nice horse going forward. And uh, hopefully, the stable can uh, repay us a little bit this week after they let us down last week, but. Um, yeah, I think she's a very smart horse, and uh, Sugar Delight's got a fair bit of upside to her. She'll come off the arm hard, um, and then if there is a bit of a, a war, Nazivira, she's going to be sitting up just off them, getting a soft trip, probably three three or four of the feds, and uh, it's always a good winning spot across the park, coming off the soft trip of, of, of hard sectionals. So she could be a danger if the, if the race is running a little bit upside down. Well, the firm first selection from Aldo is number four, Lion Queen, and that's uh, not bad odds if you want to throw that into your all-to-come multiple bets, trading at around about $2.20. Of course, we'll give you the updated uh, odds there on the South African totes once that is available. And then number 10, Nas Vera, could be a nice inclusion there for those quartets. Remember, those pools are now co-mingled, so get involved in the quartets. Number 10 could represent some value if running into the placing or winning. Then we're moving on to the last leg of the jackpot. We've gone with numbers 3, 10, 1 and 4. 3, 10, 1 and 4. We'll start with number 3, that is Sister Sammy. Yeah, this is a very, very hard race. Um, a lot of horses out of form in this race. Uh, I think Sister Sammy's got the ability. Um, I'm pretty sure the one horse will try and hold up early. He'll use his gate speed. Vance is a very aggressive driver. And um, so that'll probably bring the 10 horse into the race. But, um, yeah, this is a very hard race to to pick. Um, I could have picked another four or five horses in this race. But sort of just pick, try to pick around the value. Um, and uh, hopefully we can get it right. But uh, very hard race, very open race. Uh, if I was a punter, it? Uh, don't be scared to throw an extra couple of numbers in, like Benji or just Chivalry or those types of horses. They, they might just come into the race um, if the race is run right. But uh, you can't have them all, unfortunately. But um, I've sort of picked the three best ones I thought were in this race. And uh, like I said, but don't be scared to throw a few extra numbers in if you, uh, if you want to. 
Aldo, this horse, uh, number 10, Rodasi, uh, Chris Lewis gets the drive. This individual could just have the run of the race at nice odds. Well, that, that, that's my feeling. I think um, the one horse will try to hold up. Sister Samuel keep coming off the gate. Chambray were coming off the gate. And uh, I think there'll be a bit of hot speed early. And um, even High Sugar Rush could be coming off the gate early. So, you know, there's a lot of speed between barriers one to five. And that could bring uh, the 10 horse into the race. And, uh, you know, you got the master, Chris Lewis, on there. who will just sit there smoking the pipe. And uh, if anyone can find the run late, it'll be him. And uh, he could be getting up at the uh, 15 to 1 that he's currently quoted. Well, there you heard it from Aldo. He's given us a little bit of confidence there for an outsider in the form of number 10, Rodasi. Chris Lewis gets the drive, and like you heard what Aldo said, he could be smoking the pipe and waiting to strike into the closing stages. So throw this into all your bets, including the exactors, trifectas, and quartets, because the anti-post market shows at around about $15. That's the anti-post market from down under. Of course, we will update you once we have those odds on the South African tote. So just recapping the entire jackpot, that slide's going to come up on screen any moment now. The best bet kicks off in race number four, and it is number one, Steno. We think this individual will be very hard to beat from the ace draw. And then the jackpot first leg, numbers one, ten, two, and seven, followed by four and one, by numbers four, two, ten, by numbers three, ten, one, and four. So there's excite an exciting card to look forward to come this Friday at Gloucester Park. Eldo, thanks very much for your time. And contribution once again. Hopefully, we can land this jackpot. Yeah, fingers crossed. But uh, like I said, don't be scared to throw an extra couple of numbers in if anyone likes anything because uh, it's a very competitive race card this Friday. And uh, yeah, these selections were been easy this week. The standouts, so uh, you can easily throw another one or two runners in for each race, and uh, there, there could be a good value at the end of it for the punters. Thanks very much to Aldo Kodapasi for providing us with his selections and previews at Gloucester Park. And like you heard Aldo say, it's very competitive racing. It looks very, very tricky. So feel free to add a few numbers to that suggested jackpot. If you're playing this jackpot and best bet this Friday, good luck to you.